happy you could make it by. It's Fiddleback Friday, of course. I'm Robert with Fiddleback Forge, and I have got 14 fantastic knives from Fiddleback Forge and family to tease you with, and here they are. Fiddleback Friday, I don't think has ever been better. We got some EDC knives from Warlander and Fiddleback Forge. We got some CPM models from Fiddleback Forge. Bush Hermit right there, protagonist, look at that thing. Kohata Knife Company, yeah, it's nothing better than that right there. Warlander Enterprises, check that out. W.A. Searles showing off of some hidden tang models. W.2 of the Moan and Damascus, Mammoth Ivory, what? And Joey Berry, JB Knife Works. Look at that chef knife right there and that handle material. Gonna talk a lot about that. Mr. Lee Dykes, Okmogi Knife Company making an appearance as well. This Fiddleback Friday is on fire. Glad you guys can make it. Okay, just in case you're new around here and you're not quite familiar with how Fiddleback Friday works, it's pretty simple actually. Every single week, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, that's why it's called Fiddleback Friday, duh, we release brand new knives. Now, you can check those out at fiddlebackforge.com slash, you guessed it, Friday, and that's where all the knives post. Now, you'll want to be a little bit early uh, and refresh your screen right at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why? Because it's the first person who finishes the entire checkout process that gets the knife, not the first person who puts it in the cart, so you need to be ready. And uh, if you need a little bit more information, maybe I missed some of the specs in this video, or you just don't feel like watching the whole thing, you can check out photo previews and specs at fiddlebackforce.com slash preview. Now that's always posted up uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning at the latest. And you can also sign up for our newsletter on the website as well. So we'll send it right to your inbox so you never miss a week of Fiddleback Friday awesomeness. Now I'm gonna show you what all these knives look like in hand. And I gotta tell you, they're pretty awesome. So check them out. We're going to get that started right now. All right. So we're going to start off Fiddleback Friday with Fiddleback Forge and the smallest of today's offering. This is the Solo. This is the little brother to the loner, which is the little brother to the Bush Hermit. I'll show you the difference between this and the size of a Bush Hermit uh, since I happen to have one of those as well. Uh, but this beauty right here, I don't even know if this is going to come through in the video. Hopefully that does, that wood. East Indian Rosewood, and it finished out like glass. It is gorgeous. It has gorgeous grain, gorgeous texture, and really, you throw in those natural liners, the full orange pinstriping treatment on top of those natural liners. Whew, this knife is freaking gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Andy really outdid himself. Hopefully, everything is really focusing in. Uh, you can toss in a taper tang on that bad boy as well. So the steel in this is 8670. Uh, you can tell by the hammer texture right there. I'm going to show you another one uh, with the difference between hammer textures uh, that will always let you know with a Fiddleback Forge knife what kind of steel you've got. Uh, so if you ever pick up one secondary market, pretty easy to tell based on the way the flats look uh, what steel you got just in case the person you got it from might not know. But this bad boy is brand spanking new. You will be the first and only forever home it has ever had because if you bought this knife and sold it, something's wrong with you. Just there, I'll put it out there. I'll say it right there. So that is the Solo. Uh, I'm actually gonna put him right there. I'm gonna compare that in just a moment. All right, next up in the EDC range. Well, this is the EDC. The EDC-2 to be exact, not to be confused with the EDC-1 that has a slightly more bulbous rear end back here on the pommel. Uh, this one's a little bit more open in the handle design with a single arc. Uh, it doesn't swell out on the bottom side of the pommel like the EDC-1. Much better handle design in my opinion. Uh, that's why you see more of the EDC-2s than the 1. It was definitely an improvement or at least most people think it is. Uh, this one again, 8670 steel, you can tell by the hammer texture right there. I'll give you a comparison in just one sec. Um, on the handle material, this is the Harlequin cross cut canvas. You haven't seen that one, but I think maybe one other time you've seen it so far. Uh, really cool stuff, black liners, white pinstripes. Uh, the EDC2 has got a three inch blade, seven and a half inches overall, you can tell right there. You get a full four fingers on it. 
uh, but the blade's not too overly long, so it really still makes a great EDC size knife. Um, like I said, 8670 on the steel, eighth inch thick with a taper tang, a really nice, super nice taper tang. Hopefully that's focusing in. And he gave it the full on mosaic pen treatment. Absolutely awesome. Got the uh, Trinity pen out, all mosaic on that one as well. This one's really just dolled out all the way. Really, really cool knife. And uh, let me get the uh, next one out so I can show you the difference between those uh, two steel the hammer texture. All right, so here is a different hammer texture. This one's CPM 154. Uh, you'll notice it's got a little bit more of a jagged uh, texture or a shape to the, uh, to the hammer texture. Uh, this is the Bush Hermit, of course, ever popular model in the Fiddleback Forge lineup for sure. Vintage cheddar, paper, micarta. Say that three times fast, but when you do, just think, it looks like a gorgeous Osage uh, with all the reliability of a synthetic, really, really cool and beautiful handle material. That's right, I said cool instead of cool because sometimes my mouth don't work. But you know what does work? Andy's taper. Look at that. Whew, thing is super sexy. Really awesome, really awesome knife. Uh, on the Bush Hermit, uh, I'm going to compare it to two different ones to show you two different things. All right, so this is the big uh, brother up here, Bush Hermit on the top. This is the Solo on the bottom. Uh, you can see there's a massive size difference, of course, uh, with the Bush Hermit on top having a four inch blade. The Solo only has a two and three quarter inch blade. So this is the smallest of the brothers. This is the biggest of the brothers. Um, major size difference, but it's amazing how well that overall shape works for three different size knives and it does beautifully for all three. So that was one comparison I wanted to show you. Uh, the other is actually the hammer textures. So I can get this bad boy situated in hand, that one's situated in hand. All right, so you can see on the EDC2 right here on the bottom, uh, that is 8670. You notice the hammer texture is a little more rounded uh, and this is a little more angular for the CPM 154 and that is how you can tell the difference between those two So 8670 rounded more angular on top right there is the CPM 154 So that's how you tell the difference uh, if you're looking at a fiddleback forged knife that has hammer texture um, That's what it is now spalting is a different story um, that one either comes on uh, a2 or o1 steel uh, o1 being like more of the older ones that we did um, but 01, you can tell it looks a little more flat. A2 has got a little more depth to the, to the, uh, uh, spalting. So that's how you tell. All right, let's bring out the beast. This is their protagonist and it is very sexy, very long, very lean, super sexy swedge on that. And you can tell by the hammer texture right there. You just learned it. Here's the test. Which steel is this? That's right. Some of you got it right. CPM 154. And it's worth noting that this protagonist model is the first one I believe I've seen in CPM 154. And that is the first Bush Hermit I've seen in CPM 154. So uh, if you like stainless variants on your knives, better snatch these up because you don't see them very often from Fiddleback. Um, what you also haven't seen from Fiddleback is that G10 material right there. That's DeLorean G10. And I think we've had it on a uh, JB Knifeworks knife and a WA Searles knife, but this is the first Fiddleback Forge knife uh, that's had it on there, so pretty cool. Uh, Trinity pin out rocking right there with the black liners, the black pins, white pin stripes. Really beautifully done, but it's all about that blade on the protagonist. Really, really cool. Uh, overall, 10 and a quarter inches, so this is not a pocket carry knife by any stretch of the imagination. Five and a half inch blade. Uh, so make sure you know your carry laws where you are from because if you live in a uh, Let's say a communist state um, This might be illegal for you to carry without a permit being a five and a half inch blade, but know your laws and uh, Get a badass knife because it's cool CPM 154 Protagonist I'm gonna put that bad boy right there where that blades visible Okay, so I'm gonna move into the fiddleback family, but since we were talking about blade textures um, I thought I'd start with uh, Russell's Knives, Kohata Knife Company. Um, this is the Mountain Town EDC. Um, I actually have one of these personally. It's a fantastic EDC knife, really great. Uh, this one's in walnut, but 
I digress, let's talk about the blade because uh, that's what I wanted to bring up. So this is A2 steel and you'll notice that it's got a spalting on there. Now, uh, Russell was an apprentice at Fiddleback Forge, uh, so he learned the, the process for doing the spalting on the flats with A2. Uh, so if you see a Fiddleback Forge knife uh, that looks like this texture, uh, you'll know that it's A2. Now Russell does A2 uh, with a spalted texture or a hammer texture, uh, both. So with Russell, you'll, with Kohata and Russell, you'll see uh, two different versions of A2, but with uh, Fiddleback Forge, A2 always looks like uh, that with the flats. So anyway, uh, back to Russell's build here. Fantastic knife, natural liners, that blue pinstripe. Really, really gorgeous. Very, very similar to the one that I own personally. Uh, I gotta tell you, it's one of my favorite knives for sure to carry. So, fantastic knife as usual from Russell. Three and one eighth inch on the blade, seven and one eighth inch overall. Um, three thirty seconds A2, skeletonized tang. Balance point on that bad boy is right in front of that second set of pins. So it makes it feel super light in hand. Really, really great indexing right there. You always know where it is. Uh, a little chunkier on the handle than say a Fiddleback Forge knife. So if you like them to feel a little more full in hand, uh, you will enjoy Russell's knives a lot. So Kahata Knife Company can't go wrong. The detail in Russell's knives are, are just amazing. Uh, like check out a couple of these pictures right here. You'll see what I mean. Um, the detail, like I said, his uh, fit and finish is second to nobody for sure. So some of the pictures you just saw from the detail was actually for this knife uh, from Kohata. This is the Mini Nomad. It's awesome. I really like this design. I like the Mini Nomad a lot. I like the full size Nomad as well. And I love Koa. I don't know if you can see the chatoyants uh, popping because of the way we do the lights. Um, out in the sun with a single light source, it absolutely dances. Koa is one of my favorite. It's definitely a weak point for me. You don't know how close you guys were to not ever seeing this knife ever. I'll just go ahead and put it out there. So natural liners, blue pen stripes that go so well with those wood scales. Absolutely awesome. Now this day too, I was talking about with Russell, uh, where he does a hammer texture on there instead of the spalting. Really nice, subtle finish, really beautiful. You can see that grind is just absolutely perfect. Russell always knocks it out of the park. So three and three eighths inch on the blade. Uh, seven and a half inches overall, and I've pointed out before on Russell's knives, uh, up to about right here, the ed the spine is chamfered uh, to where it's really comfortable for you to put your fingers on there and put pressure on the blade. Uh, but out here towards the tip, uh, you can turn that bad boy over, strike a fire steel all day long. Uh, keep some sharp out there where comfort's not an issue, so you still get the best of absolutely both worlds. And on the Nomad, the Mini Nomad is just like the, uh, the full-size Nomad. The indexing has moved slightly forward to where when you're holding that, your finger lines up just behind that blade edge to give you ultimate transfer of power right there. So when it comes to bushcrafting, uh, Russell really thinks through those kind of things. So really cool, skeletonized full tang, and Koa. That's, that's all you got to say. Just Koa. Koa. All right, Joey Berry, JB Knifeworks, uh, just showing off basically at this point. Eight inch chef knife, 8670 on the steel and 330 seconds. Of course, you get the full distal taper, the whole treatment that Joey usually gives you, uh, the great balance, the whole nine yards that you usually get with a chef knife that Joey's made. But this one, look at that handle. I don't know if the detail's coming through, so just take a look at this detail shot right here. And you can see how absolutely stunning that material is. So it actually has real pearl dust uh, ground up in it and it's made from the same material that they make bowling balls out of. So to say it finishes out smooth and beautiful uh, and as hard and durable would be a vast understatement. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. I'm glad I threw up that uh, detail shot for you because I, I just don't know if I can even capture it uh, on video or camera to be honest with you. It's stunning. Taper tang on there really helps that balance out. Beautiful grind, 12 and a half inches overall, eight inch blade and uh, balance point right there where you need it. But it's, it's about that handle all day long. It's gorgeous. Tiffany blue on the liners or the pinstripes rather, black liners on that. Absolutely gorgeous. Joey is absolutely killing it with that. Just, just gorgeous. JB knife works. If you don't have one in your kitchen, there it is right there. And I can tell you, uh, Allison said that if you wanted to buy it for her, she'd be willing to take it. So, you know. And since we're talking about Joey Berry 
an 8670 steel. Might as well roll into his other two knives that we've got. Uh, this one is the Eclipse model. Now you've seen the Eclipse model before, uh, but Joey's making a change to it. He's going to roll it out with only 16th of an inch 8670 from now on. Uh, this is his kind of, you know, fish and fowl model, bird and trout, whatever you want to call it. This is kind of his addition uh, to that market. And uh, having a super thin slicey blade just really works well for that. This one is rocking orange camel bone. It's absolutely gorgeous. I like the hollow pins. If you can actually tell, you can see through them there. Really cool. And uh, different on both sides, which is kind of cool when it comes to bone and other natural materials. Uh, really get a unique perspective whichever side you're looking at natural liners orange pinstripes on that skeletonized full tank because why in the heck would you need to taper 16th of an inch 8670 uh, well let me answer that for you. you you don't you don't so how do you know uh, that you've got 16th of an inch well he's got a new mark that he's doing on the side when it's the thinner steel like that uh, so you'll be able to know if you see JB knife works right there on the side you know that it's 16th of an inch you don't have to guess of course if you see a shot like that it's going to be pretty obvious and that's why it's there because it won't fit right there anymore. So there you go. Next up, Joey Berry, JB Knife Works, the last knife of the day for him. This is the Layman model in a bone linen micarta, which is gorgeous. Got the hollow pins on that. And again, the 16th of an inch. So this thing is an absolute razor blade. So if you want a daily carry knife ready to get the job done, 8670 is super tough. Uh, so even in a thinner steel like that, should be good to go for sure, uh, or Joey wouldn't do it. So three and three quarters of an inch on the blade size, eight and a quarter inch overall. Skeletonized full tang again, because again, why do you need to taper 16th? You don't. It's already super thin. Balance point on that knife is right there at that second pin right there. So really good balance. Gives a little bit of weight in hand, but very nimble because of the balance point is right there where you normally index it anyway. Uh, interesting fact about the layman, as I set it down right here, um, it was actually featured in Knives Illustrated a few months back right here in this issue. If I can get that to focus in without knocking all the knives over. Uh, but you'll notice right there, JB Knife Works. Hatchet and Layman combo. Now we do have one of those hatchets in stock. It's actually paired up with a Fiddleback Forge Nest Muck. It's on the site right now. Uh, but if you wanted us to break those up, send us a message, let me know. Um, just, just hit us up on the website, fiddlebackforge.com. And uh, if you're interested in either the Nest Muck or the hatchet and breaking those up, uh, hey, ask. The worst we can do is say no or wait a little bit longer for somebody that might want to set. But uh, that is the Layman. It was featured in here. Uh, so pick up that issue of Knives Illustrated. Kevin Stellar wrote a great article about Joey's knives in that. Warlander Enterprises, Bush Baby. And of course, Amy's killing it. Knocking it out of the park as usual with this cool little EDC model right here. It's actually one of my favorite models of hers. It's just a super sexy little EDC. Uh, you can just barely get a full four fingers on there as you can tell, um, and I've got extra large hands, so if you've got smaller hands, it's gonna be great. Uh, but the nice thing is the open shape, uh, just kind of makes it fit your hand no matter what size. Indexing's great to keep you off that blade. A uh, little finger guard there, really nice hammer texture on there. This uh, handle material right here, the scales, this is Paduk, I think is how you pronounce it. It's P-A-D-A-U-K, but I think it's pronounced Paduk. I think the second A is silent. Maybe it's not. If you disagree, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Shoot me a link of where I can learn better to how to pronounce it. And look, I don't know it all. I'm willing to learn. Got some black G10 bolsters on there. Rolling Commando. Super sexy as is. Laying your tube. Everything. Perfect. Perfect. But, you know with Amy, there's a, there's a little bit extra. There's a little bit extra. Because Amy is a fantastic leather worker as well so she makes her own sheaths for every knife so you get the combo pack whenever you buy one of amy's knives warlander enterprises man bush baby all right amy of the warlander enterprises i'm going to show you the sheath first on this one uh, just to show you some of the leather detail you get with one of amy's sheaths with her knife absolutely gorgeous work now one thing you're going to notice about this belt sheath right away other than the size of it, of course, and the shape of it, is that purple thread. Now, what in the world could go in a sheath that has purple accent thread? Well, let me show you. All right, so that sheath belongs to this 
gorgeous knife right here. This is the Otter from Warlander Enterprises in Aurora Curly Maple. Now it's actually hard holding it at this angle to, to make it move around. But hopefully you can see that Chateauian. This thing absolutely dances. It's, it's incredible. There's a little more blue on this side, but you can still see the hint of purple. It's really awesome how that color just transfers through there. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Gorgeous scales. It's topped it off natural liners, tossed in some Tiffany blue pinstripes that really, really set it off. That's a, just a gorgeous knife. Looks fantastic in that sheath too. Great hammer texture, 8670 on the steel, eighth inch thick, uh, three and three quarters inch on the blade, eight and five eighths inch overall. Just a really comfortable four finger knife. Really locks down back here on your pinky. Got a lot of control right there on your ring finger with that hump. That's where all your power and your grip is too, guys. So. Really, really cool knife. Great indexing. Feels comfortable, confident in hand, no matter how you're holding it or using it. It's a great knife. Otter, beautiful, beautiful color. That thing's going to move pretty quick if I had to guess. Gorgeous. More Lander Otter. Next up, W.A. Searles with a cool EDC knife right here. This is the Alcovi in Vintage Westinghouse Micarta. Full hidden tang. That thing is cool. Nice mosaic pen holding it all together. Man, really just superbly done. It's really hard to do a hidden tang knife like that out of a set of scales on each side. Alan pulls it off great. Uh, got the nice uh, black spacer rocking right there. Three and one eighth inch on that W2 steel with Hamon. Beautifully done. And if you're wondering, it matches up really, really nicely, as you can tell right there. Matches both sides, absolutely gorgeous. Alan did a great, great job on this one. Uh, seven inches overall makes this a really, really nice pocket carry knife, especially in my opinion. You can belt carry it too, but really nice EDC size. I just prefer pocket carry personally, but that's just me. Really, really cool. Give you another look at that W2. Super duper nice. That is the Alcovi. I just wanted to keep showing it to you, so nice. If that Hamon and the W2 on the last one wasn't enough for you, this bad boy right here takes the cake. It is decked out. W.A. Searles rocking this one-off. Honeycomb Damascus, hollow grind, Damascus spacers in the guard, mosaic pen, mammoth ivory, hidden tang. This thing is just absolutely stunning. This is going to make an awesome addition to somebody's collection for sure. Alan knocked it out of the park. 532nd inch thick on the Damascus right here. Three and a half inch blade makes it great for everyday carry. Seven and three quarters inch overall. You get a full four fingers on there. That's a great knife. Feels good in the hand. It's actually super well balanced, which is kind of hard to do when you're talking about something steel. Do you throw some bone on there? It's hard to get a good balance on there, but it's right there. Just in front of that mosaic pen. I can't say enough about that knife. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely stunning. The Damascus is always a big hit. Gorgeous. Alan knocked it out of the park on that. W.A. Searles, that one off right there. Mm, that's a great, great knife. Somebody's got it. Super lucky to get that one. Last but not least on Fiddleback Friday, Oak Mogi Knife Company with the largest knife that we've had from Mr. Lee Dykes. You guys for the past several weeks seem to really be liking Lee's take on knives and his designs. I think this one's going to be no exception. This is the biggest one we've had with a five inch blade. This is his Savage model. Really, really cool desert ironwood, natural liners, yellow pinstripes. Man, there's a lot to love about this knife, but I can tell you what, if you are a newer knife carrier in this size range, in the five inch blade, if you haven't had them before, uh, they can get a little intimidating, feel a little bit unwieldy. Uh, this one, the way that it balances out right there where you're indexing makes it feel super controlled, but also the shape of the handle where it's indented in right here, kind of a little bit behind the blade, uh, it makes the finger guard a little more exaggerated, but not so much that it feels weird. It feels very, very comfortable and really locks you in. Uh, so if you're not used to a blade this size that normally might intimidate you or feel a little unwieldy in hand, this one feels really, really secure. So that's something that's a selling point for you. 
I think you should pick this bad boy up right here uh, before Lee's prices go up. He's a relatively new knife maker and he's on the up and up and he's up and coming and his prices are only going to go up as he gets more popular and the demand goes up. And that knife right there is worth adding to anybody's collection. In my opinion, nine and three eighths inch overall, eighth inch, 8670. That steel is tough as nails. You'll be able to do anything you want to do with that bad boy right there. Okamogi Knife Company, Savage, closes out our Fiddleback Friday. And of course, you know by now, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. So get you an Okamogi or a Fiddleback or a Warlander, W.A. Searles, J.B. Knife Works. Man, the Fiddleback family is rocking. See you guys next week.